everybody is Davey from the 80s and you are now entering the cinema chop shop. So park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button down below. Also, you can look in the description and find a link from my Patreon account. You can recommend movies for me to review, music for me to review, whatever you want. Just hit me up and let me know. And while we're at it, we are back at it again with another review for Bah Cobra Kai, baby. What's up? Anyway, so we're on episode five of season three, and the episode is entitled Miyagi Do. All right. So, um, <laughs> in this episode, Daniel is still in Japan. He's hanging out with Kumiko and Chosen because you know Chosen was at the end of the episode. He popped up. He was like, "What up, player?" Um, Kumiko decides that she's going to be taking the role. I feel like Kumiko is this, is taking the title of the wise person in this season. Um, you, she's taking a role of like the female Miyagi, man. She's dropping gems. She's letting people know common sense is still alive up in this thing. Uh, but she just seems to be the wise old owl. Like she just seems to be that person as granting knowledge to people in this story and giving them the information that they need in order to process and understand what's going on in their life. Right. Um, also, Chosen, on the other hand, is a stone faced and seems like he's holding a damn grudge with Daniel about the past. Like the whole thing, I swear, I thought this man was about to pull out a shank and cut this boy Daniel up as soon as he got to the corner. And uh, it was uh, it was funny in the episode to see that uh, she was like, all right, man, I got errands to run. I'm gonna leave y'all too. And Daniel was like, no, 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 no. Don't leave me with this man. This man is crazy, man. I don't, nah, come on. Well, don't leave me with him. And uh, <laughs> shout out to that big ass ice ball in that uh, brandy cup. I, it was either in this episode, I think it was this episode. But anyway, to the point. Um, <sighs> Honestly, these little run-ins between the Cobra Kai and the Miyagi Do finally led up to something. It finally led up to something. Like they've been having all this little bickering and arguing and fighting, and it finally, it finally turned into something. Like I was so tired of seeing these motherfuckers just run back and forth, talking shit, doing little gags and little pushes and things like that. It was kind of annoying, man. Like all this stuff with the teacher and the principal, and then uh, Hawk playing the little PC thing. That was funny though uh, earlier in the season, but still. All these little run-ins, man, were just, it was just getting annoying. And it was cool to see that it finally escalated into something between the two, right? Uh, the fight scene was decent. It had a really dope score to back it up. Really, really dope score to back it up. But that fight scene was, I mean, it was decent. But I really felt like it could have been a lot better. A lot of the fighting sequences in the season so far, to me, to me, felt like it could have been a lot better. But that's just my opinion. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um... Also, I'm not really digging PTSD, Sam. Um, she was one of the strongest fighters in the show, period, like, whatsoever. And for her to be freaking terrified of Tori after beating her ass seems unbelievable as hell to me. Like, I cannot believe that you kicked this, you Shawn Michaels sweet chin music this hoe over a rail and let her fall, and yet you're afraid of her? I mean, you walking around with the freaking Freddy Krueger scratch on your arm and you over here tripping? Like, who cares? Like, you whooped her. Like, you already showed that you could beat her. Why are you afraid of her? Like, I don't get why she's afraid of her. Like, it makes no sense to me. I don't get why she's afraid. It makes no sense. Like, why are you afraid of her? Like, she didn't do anything, right? Because uh, at first I thought it was, okay, she's just afraid to be in the school. It's bringing back traumatic uh, memories of Miguel falling and all this crazy shit. That's what I thought it was. But it turned out that she's really afraid of her. She's really afraid of Tori. And I'm just like, why? Why are you afraid of her? You whooped her ass. Like, you give her them hands again. Round two, fight. Uh, <laughs> so also little things in the episode. Johnny's working with Miguel, trying to get him back on his road to recovery. And uh, which leads us to a dope cameo from D. Snyder. Shout outs to the front man for Twisted Sister. I can't believe that this man was actually in this TV show. Because once I heard his voice, <clears throat> excuse me i was like yo that sounds like d snyder and uh once it popped up i was like yo that's d snyder that's tight um so it was really cool to see him and um i really thought that the season was going to end with miguel showing progress but i guess christmas came a little bit early for my man because he's starting to show signs of life uh in his footsies during the segment of i want to rock uh from d snyder um Robbie has one of the best fight sequences of the season so far in jail when he's brawling with old boy from old boy uh, from cell block D. Uh, <laughs> that was one of the coolest fight sequences. And I feel like him and Hawk have some of the best. I don't know. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do their own stunts, 
But it seems like whoever – he, him and Hawk seem to have the choreography down packed. Like, it seems like it's really easy for them. And, like, they seem to be really, really good at sequencing and timing and things like that. Shout-outs to him and Hawk for that. Everybody else don't – and Miguel, too. Miguel is a good one, too. Everybody's sequencing and timing don't seem to be all, all on point. But for them three got, like, impeccable timing from what I've noticed so far. Um, dude, I, I honestly think that him fighting them dudes in jail is just, like, that's, that's, a, that's a sign, bro. He's, he's, he's joining Cobra Kai. He's joining Cobra Kai. Like, there's it's no, it's no ifs, ands, or buts. His, he's slowly but surely creeping closer and closer to Crease. And by taking his advice, I really feel like that's that's the green light that he's going to Cobra Kai. You could book it. Um, this series is some of the most fluid, entertaining storytelling that I've seen in a long time. Not too many shows has this type of storytelling, especially based on source material. So, like, I don't mean like source material as in like a book. I'm talking about source material as in this is like a show based off of an old movie. So to find out that they can make a full ass show with three seasons plus more about a simplistic story like The Karate Kid, it's amazing. It's really amazing how they can hatch out all of these ideas and build this freaking world based off of these few characters. Um, what else? Um, Uh, as far as storytelling in this show, I'm looking at my notes, sorry about that. Um, this show to me has been very consistent with its quality. A lot of shows have those episodes where they dip and they kind of fall off a little bit and they bounce back and then they fall off and then they have a real good episode followed by a whack episode. But this one seems pretty good with keeping up the quality, which brings me to my brief little spoiler section. So if you have not seen this episode already, you might want to go ahead and tune out. Um, so I think that what Chosen taught Daniel was going to be applied to Miyagi-Do when he gets home. It makes sense. They're basically at war with freaking Cobra Kai, and it's, and they're over here talking about, like, okay, you know, in war, you just have to learn how to disable the enemy uh, that's trying to cause you harm. You can't allow him to continue to bring you harm, so you got to disable him. So I think that Daniel was going to reach into his bag of tricks, and he's going to teach this to his students. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, just so they can know how to incapacitate the enemy and not just counter all the time. Uh, also, something that was brought to my attention while watching this episode. I noticed that Hawk earlier in the season was hesitant about the whole rat and the cobra situation, right? I noticed it, but I didn't think much of it. But now it's starting to make sense. You can see that he regretted breaking his boy Demetrius' arm. And I think that this is a metaphor. Uh, this was... This is basically why that metaphor of the cobra and the mouse was there. You know what I'm saying? He was, when, when they were talking about the mouse, he was pretending, he was acting like, yeah, man, you go ahead and feed that mouse to the uh, snake. I don't care. But at the same time, you could tell, like, in, a, in his face, you could tell in his face, like, he just, he wouldn't do that. Like, that's not something that he wanted to do. Like, he faking the funk. And I think he's starting to come to the realization that he ain't as hard of a person as he claims he is. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think that, I think that this is a freaking a signal, a bad signal telling us where Demetrius is going in regards to that. I think he's going to realize that Cobra Kai is not what he wants to do and he ain't about that life. Um, so also, I was wrong about Chosen helping, uh, helping Daniel. Uh, it turned out that it was Kimiko and she, uh, she was able to basically run into the old friend, which was the little girl from the Karate Kid 2, the one from the Typhoon that Daniel saved from the... Um, the, the pole, I don't know her name off the top of my head, but um, so basically she's going to be the one that assists Daniel with his uh problem that he's having with business. So I think that that's, I knew that it was going to be some sort of character from the past that ties this in. He had to have some sort of access to somebody from above and it was going to be somebody from his past to do this. That's just a given, you know, that's just simplistic storytelling at its finest. Um, that's my recap or that's what I think of the episode. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know whatever you, what thoughts you have. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is Dave from the 80s. I am now signing off and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the way out. Till next time, adios.